Welcome back to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. I'm Chris Dayhut, and I'm going to be telling you about how to add analog interfacing with the Raspberry Pi computer. Raspberry Pis don't have a native uh, analog input, so we have to use an interface chip to help with it. But truly, it doesn't get any simpler than the circuit and the software that I'm about to show you. Let's take a look. The chip I've selected for the analog to digital conversion is the MCP3004-3008. I'm using the 8 version, which is uh, giving us 8 channels of uh, analog to digital. Uh, the nice thing about this is it operates from uh, as low as 2.7 volts, which is really good because the Raspberry Pi primarily works with 3.3 volts for logic. Uh, so we know we've got that capability, and it goes up over 5 volts. Uh, it's 10 bits, so we've got really good resolution, and it is uh, interfaced to the Raspberry Pi with uh, Serial Peripheral Interface, or SPI. And of course, Raspberry Pi has that capability. So all around, this is a really good chip. Uh, the implementation is incredibly simple, and uh, to help figure out the wiring and everything, I do like everybody does. I just Google it and see what pops up for a, a recommended uh, wiring. One of my favorite resources for everything Raspberry Pi is their website. They've got excellent resources on just about everything that you'd want to do with a Raspberry Pi. The website's kind of getting big, so it's a little bit tough to navigate, but I found how to do interfacing with the MCP3008 by actually searching Google for Raspberry Pi and MCP3008, and I found a link right to the right page on Google's, or on uh, Raspberry Pi's website. Now I'll have that link in the in comments below or in the description below so you can follow along easily. Now that particular web page, if you scroll down, it walks you literally through the very simple steps to get this up and running. And it starts out with a very simple uh, schematic, shows a breadboard, shows the uh, I.O. pins on the Raspberry Pi, very, very simple diagram to follow along with. So that's what we're going to use for our example. Now what I'm going to be working off of is my prototyping station for the Raspberry Pi. I've got a Pi 4 installed on here. I've done a lot of experimenting with it. It's got a built-in breadboard with its own power supply. In this case, we really won't need it. Uh, the little package that I've got here, you've got uh, a power supply for the breadboard and the cord stores underneath here. Uh, here's where the power supply would normally go for the Raspberry Pi, uh, but that's over by the computer right now. And uh, it's just a nice little package, keeps everything together for prototyping like this. So what we're going to do is follow along this schematic and I'm going to use my Raspberry Pi cheat sheet. I always keep this diagram handy. Uh, helps me find my way along the GPIO header because, you know, 40 pins and I'm getting a little bit up there in age, it's easy for me to get lost. So now what we'll do, we'll just follow along step by step, following these wires and attaching them to the chip and from uh, the breadboard back over to the Raspberry Pi and then we'll add in a potentiometer in place of what they're showing here is a simple trim trimmer pot. So let's dive in and start wiring things up. Okay, here's some of my jumpers. This is the 10K potentiometer that I'm using for this setup circuit. This correlates very nicely with the uh, joystick uh, that this circuit will actually end up in. And it's a two-axis analog joystick using two 10K pots. I've got alligator clip leads that terminate with male DuPonts, so that's easy for breadboarding. And now we'll just start plugging in wires. We're going to need to get power from Raspberry Pi. We're going to need 3 volts, so we'll connect that. Create a 3 volt rail here, 3.3 volts to be technical. We're going to need a ground or a 0 volt rail. And that is three pins down over here. 
And again, just follow along with the diagram. And that wraps up the wiring. Uh, not a whole lot going on here. It looks kind of scary, but realistically, you look at this diagram, this matches except for the wire colors, because I don't have all the different color jumpers. Uh, but it's quite simple, quite straightforward. From here, we can take this over to the uh, desk that I've got in the electronics department here, connect this up to a monitor so we can see what's going on, and start writing the program. With the prototype station and our, our test circuit all over here by the desk, I've got uh, everything hooked up, keyboard, mouse, so now we can go uh, further on and start uh, working on the program for it. And as I mentioned, I've got the reference material off the Raspberry Pi website, uh -huh. and what we're going to do is look for uh, that information, so I'm going to select Projects, and uh, we'll select Browse All Projects, and to speed this up, we're going to select electronic components. And we should see, oh, look at that. How's that? A fart detector. I don't think we're working on that today. Uh, what we're looking for is physical computing with Python. Don't select physical computing with Scratch. That, uh, it will do the same thing, just in a different programming style or method or language, Scratch, as opposed to Python. Uh, so we'll select that, and it tells you what you're going to need and all that. And I'm just going to zoom down here instead of going through all this stuff. And the one we're concerned with is analog inputs. Tells us right away that uh, we need SPI, so we'll make sure that uh, we install the package and we will also make sure that the interface is turned on. So the first thing first, let's uh, copy and paste this. Copy, and we'll go into a terminal real quick. Paste it. Hit enter. It's already installed on this system, so it's going to look a little different than what you might see. Uh, showing that it installed. Now we'll make sure that the SPI interface is enabled. So I'll go there on the Raspberry Pi, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, Raspberry Pi configuration, interfaces, SPI is enabled already. So we really don't need to click it, it's not going to serve any purpose. Um, but normally when you do an enable it and then you click OK, it'll tell you to reboot the computer so that it can activate all the additional code required for that. Uh, and that's what their directions are telling us. Now here uh, is that schematic that we worked from earlier. Works out very simple, uh, very nice. Uh, we've added a potentiometer. That's this guy. They're showing a, a trimmer pot. And now we're going to look at the code. And uh, I'm going to scooch this over to the side. And uh, I've got uh, Thony already open, or Thony, however it's pronounced. And we'll see how easy it is to program this. So start by importing the class from the GPIO0 library. Okay, copy and paste that. Uh, we are on channel 0 for my uh, potentiometer input. And now we'll see if we can read the value. Copy that, paste that here. I will save this uh, to the desktop. And we'll call this, uh, we've, I've already done some testing, so we'll make this test, whoopsie, three, two, test two. 
and we'll run it. And look at that. We've got 0.502. So I'll bet you my pot is right in the middle of its travels. Uh, this particular pot has a detent at the center. So I turned it all the way clockwise. We'll run it again. And I've got one all the way counterclockwise. And I should have close to zero. And that's what the data is showing us. Now if we want to play around with this a little bit more or have something that's going to look uh, more realistic in, in an actual program, we would actually have to put these the reading uh, into a loop. So we'll just copy that in there. We'll run that. Oh boy, that's going really fast. So we'll scroll this up and there we go. We're reading the data real time. It's actually falling behind because I don't think this uh, shell screen can uh, uh, keep up with the print statements that fast. So to fix that up a little bit, let's stop that. Um, we'll go up here. From time import sleep. And we'll add a sleep statement here. Sleep of 0.25 or 250 milliseconds. And we'll run that. And now you can see it's reading much slower and it looks much more responsive because it's not falling behind trying to keep up with all those print statements. That is how simple it is to connect uh, the MCP3008 analog to digital converter to your Raspberry Pi. So for those people that complain the Pi doesn't have analog inputs, you got 10-bit resolution, 8 total channels so I can hook up 8 potentiometers to this one chip for a lot of analog input. Now what we'll do, um, I want to show you how I incorporated this on Razzy the Robot. So what we'll do first, I'll show you what uh, the joystick looks like with its two potentiometers. Then we'll go over to the Raspberry or to the uh, Razzy the Robot's uh, computers, and I'll VNC into it and show you how the code works on the actual robot. Before we go over by the robot and look inside to see how it was interfaced there uh, through the software, here's the same joystick. Uh, this one's for a different purpose. Um, but as you can see, here's one potentiometer. Here is the other potentiometer. So that gives you two directions of control with the joystick. And this is an analog joystick. And then through here, it's just an interface card, and then that would go back to... Uh, uh, for this particular unit, it's actually for uh, another function of the robot, uh, but I'll get into that discussion at a much later time. So that's what the joystick looks like. Uh, it's very hard to show you that um, on the actual robot, uh, so I thought it'd be best to show you with this unit. Uh, now we can go ahead and take a look at uh, how, how the software works in Python to uh, deal with that and uh, how we deal with the numbers. Okay, now what we're doing, we're looking inside uh, the motion control module of Razzy the Robot to see how I implemented uh, the analog joystick using the MCP3008 chip that we were just discussing. Uh, here is the uh, import statement for the library GPIO0. Uh, here are two variables being assigned to channel 0 and channel 1. Channel 0 being front-back motion and channel 1 being left-right motion. Two potentiometers, two channels on the MCP3008 that we're using. Now we're going to just zoom down real quick into the code and I've got uh, an agent or as everybody else in the world calls it, a thread. Uh, that runs continuously as long as the robot is not in shutdown state and it reads the uh, value from the joystick front back and which is channel zero and reads the joystick value left right. Uh, now those will be in uh, as this little uh, description here kind of shows uh, zero to four will be one range 4 to almost 0 0.6 will be the dead band. And this is true for the left, right, and the forward, back. 
and then the point six to uh, 1.0 is the forward motion relative to front back left right has a similar breakdown so uh, point 0.4 would be slow 0 would be fast point 0.6 would be slow and 1 would be fast now to kind of normalize this data coming from the MCP 3008 I run it through a couple of uh, 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 functions here that just take that value and make it into something easier to work with uh, while we're doing the calculations when we actually go to make the motion. So all this is really doing is, is looking at that value and for forward and reverse that's really setting the velocity of how fast it's going to move forward or reverse. And then in these calculations here we've got F L differential and right differential. And what that's going to do as you move the joystick to the left or to the right that will give you a variable amount of modifier value, if you will. It'll be a factor that we apply to the left and right wheel speed. So if I want to turn left and the joystick is moving to the left, the left wheel would move slower, the right wheel would move faster. And the opposite is true for uh, when you're turning right. Now remember this is differential drive so uh, I can control each wheel independently of the other to get forward reverse and of course turning left and right by vary varying those speeds. And that's all there is to the analog uh, capabilities with Raspberry Pi using the MCP 3008 chip and uh, how I apply it here on Razzy the Robot. Well, that wraps up this simple project on how to add analog input to your Raspberry Pi. With this analog input, you can interface a whole world of new sensors and different sensors uh, to your Raspberry Pi projects, as I'm going to be doing here with Razzy the Robot. Thanks again for checking in with us and spending some time here on the channel and watching the video. I hope that you've already subscribed. If not, please do so. Uh, if you could, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. That's payment for what I do here. And uh, be sure to tell your friends about Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. It's a great channel. I expect it to grow, uh, but this community can only grow if we all tell each other about it and tell others to join the community. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.